Disseminated Intravascular Coagulation Definition It is a common acquired coagulation disorder characterized by diffuse small vessel thrombosis and hemorrhage, and hence it's a thrombohemorrhagic disorder. It is caused by systemic activation of coagulation, which leads to the formation of thrombi throughout the microcirculation, producing widespread ischemic damage. Note that DIC is also called as consumptive coagulopathy. Elements required for hemostasis like platelets, coagulation factors, and natural anticoagulants are depleted, leading to bleeding more commonly than all congenital coagulation disorders put together. There is systemic activation of coagulation leading to formation of microthrombi throughout the microcirculation. The platelets and coagulation factors are then consumed, thus activating fibrinolysis and secondarily, tissue hypoxia and microinfarcts caused by a myriad of microthrombi and bleeding disorder related to pathologic activation of fibrinolysis ensues. Consumption of coagulation factors causes bleeding with increased PT and PTT. Depletion of platelets also leads to risk of bleeding due to increased bleeding time. Pathogenesis. Normally, clotting is initiated by either the two pathways, both of which lead to formation of thrombin. The extrinsic pathway, which is triggered by the release of tissue factor called tissue thromboplastin. Some of the examples where the extrinsic pathway is activated include massive trauma like a motor vehicle accident or extensive surgery, hypovolemic or cardiogenic shock, malignancies like acute promyelocytic leukemia, adenocarcinomas of the pancreas, prostate carcinoma, stomach cancer, lung carcinoma, breast carcinoma, etc. Obstetric problems like amniotic fluid embolism, abruptio placenta, toxemia of pregnancy, and a dead retained fetus, acute pancreatitis, rattlesnake venom, acute respiratory distress syndrome can all activate extrinsic pathway. Intrinsic pathway is triggered by the activation of factor 12 by surface contact, collagen, or other negatively charged substances. Gram-negative septicemia, like meningococcemia caused by Neisseria meningitides, with release of endotoxin is the most common cause of disseminated intravascular coagulation. Histoplasmosis, malaria, aspergillosis, toxemia, deposition of immune complexes in diseases like systemic lupus erythematosus, severe temperature alterations like heat stroke, third degree burns, can all lead to activation of the intrinsic pathway. Clotting process is halted by rapid clearance of activated clotting factors via the following. Macrophages in the liver, endogenous anticoagulants like protein C, and concomitant activation of fibrinolysis. DIC is triggered by either of the two major mechanisms, the release of tissue factor or thromboplastic substances into the circulation, widespread endothelial cell damage, which leads to release of tissue factor and exposure of subendothelial collagen and von Willebrand factor. Irrespective of the pathogenic mechanism, DIC has the following two consequences. Widespread fibrin deposition within the microcirculation, leading to ischemia in the more severely affected or vulnerable organs, Hemolysis due to trauma to red blood cells as they pass through vessels narrowed by fibrin thrombi, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia with schistocytes. Major disorders associated with DIC include the following, with the most common being sepsis, obstetric complications, malignancy, and major trauma, especially to the brain.
superimposed bleeding tendency due to depletion of platelets and coagulation factors, and secondary release of plasminogen activators. Plasmin cleaves the fibrin, factors 5 and 8, thus reducing their concentration further. Fibrinolysis also creates fibrin degradation products having antithrombin activity, which inhibits the platelet aggregation as well as impairs fibrin polymerization. This results in a hemostatic failure. Morphology. Microthrombi in the arterioles and capillaries of the kidneys, adrenals, brain and heart, and all other organs can occur. Glomeruli show small fibrin thrombi associated with only a subtle reactive swelling of the endothelial cells or varying degrees of focal glomerulitis. Small infarcts are formed in the renal cortex due to microvascular occlusions. The entire renal cortex may be destroyed by ischemia in severe cases causing bilateral renal cortical necrosis. In Waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome, adrenal glands are involved. Microinfarcts may also be commonly seen in the brain surrounded by microscopic or gross foci of hemorrhage giving rise to bizarre neurologic signs. DIC may lead to Sheehan postpartum pituitary necrosis. The bleeding tendency in DIC may be manifested as larger than expected hemorrhages near foci of infarction. Diffuse petechiae and ecchymosis on the skin, cirrhosal linings of the body cavities, epicardium, endocardium, lungs, and mucosal lining of the urinary tract. Here's a histopathological peripheral blood smear from a patient with microangiopathic hemolytic anemia with marked red cell fragmentation. The smear shows multiple helmet cells and other fragmented red cells. Microspherocytes are also seen here. The platelet's number is reduced. The large platelet in the center suggests that the thrombocytopenia is due to enhanced destruction. Here's a high power view of a normal peripheral blood smear. Several platelets with a normal lymphocyte can also be seen. The red cells are of relatively uniform size and shape. The diameter of the normal red cell should approximate that of a nucleus of small lymphocyte. Note the central pallor should be equal to one third of its diameter. This scanning electron microscope shows a red blood cell about to be guillotined by a fibrin strand produced as a result of intravascular coagulation. This results in the formation of a fragmented red blood cell termed a schistocyte or helmet cell. Clinical features. Acute and chronic DIC can be associated with bleeding and or thrombosis with sequelae in affected organs. Acute DIC, chronic DIC. In acute DIC, there is a recent history of trauma, sepsis, malignancy, especially acute promyelocytic leukemia, or ABO incompatible blood transfusion, bleeding, especially oozing from sites of trauma, catheters or drains, thrombocytopenia, prolonged PT and APTT, low plasma fibrinogen, elevated plasma D-dimers, and abnormalities of other coagulation testing, like increased thrombin time, reduced levels of procoagulant factors such as factor 7, 10, 5, and 2. There's also reduced levels of coagulation inhibitors such as antithrombin, protein C and protein S, and microangiopathic changes are seen on peripheral blood smear. Chronic DIC. There's usually a history of malignancy, especially pancreatic, gastric, ovarian or brain tumors, venous or arterial thromboembolism, especially without another clear precipitating factor, mild or no thrombocytopenia, normal or mildly prolonged PT and APTT, normal or even slightly elevated plasma fibrinogen, and elevated plasma D-dimers. There's microangiopathic changes on peripheral blood smear in patients with chronic DIC as well. COVID-associated abnormalities. Patients with coronavirus disease 2019 
are reported to have many clinical and lab abnormalities suggesting a form of sepsis coagulopathy. The mechanisms and risk factors for these changes are not well characterized. COVID-19 patients appear to have a high fibrinogen level and predisposition to thromboembolic phenomena rather than bleeding complications unlike classical acute DIC. Purpura fulminans. This is a rare life-threatening condition characterized by DIC with extensive tissue thrombosis and hemorrhagic skin necrosis. The classic presentation includes retiform purpura with branched or angular purpuric lesions. Diagnosis. DIC is a clinical and lab diagnosis based on findings of coagulopathy and or fibrinolysis in the appropriate setting. Coagulation abnormalities include increased PT, increased PTT and APTT, decreased serum fibrinogen levels, and decreased factor V and factor VIII. Platelet abnormalities include thrombocytopenia and low platelet count. There's also increased bleeding time. Fibrinolysis abnormalities include the presence of increased levels of FDPs and D-dimers, and there's also negative D-dimers, which excludes DIC. Normocytic anemia is caused due to extensive bleeding from the skin and GI tract, mechanical damage to RBCs by fibrin thrombi causing microangiopathic, hemolytic anemia with schistocytes. Differential diagnosis. Diseases associated with bleeding and hypercoagulability like severe liver disease or heparin-induced thrombocytopenia in short, HIT, other causes of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, and thrombocytopenia such as thrombotic, thrombocytopenic purpura. Treatment. The definitive treatment is treating the underlying cause to eliminate the stimulus for the ongoing coagulation and thrombosis. Prophylactic transfusion of platelets and coagulation factors in patients with serious bleeding or in patients who are at high risk of bleeding, requiring invasive procedures. In patients who are not bleeding, prophylactic transfusion of platelets and coagulation factors is not initiated until the platelet counts drop to less than 10,000. Administration of antifibrinolytic agents like tranexamic acid, epsilon, aminocaproic acid, or aprotinin is generally contraindicated. Prognosis. Acute DIC may be life-threatening, and hence, it should be treated aggressively with anticoagulants such as heparin or the coagulants containing fresh frozen plasma. Chronic DIC is sometimes identified unexpectedly by lab testing.